Hi, so um, today I'm going to tell you about a, a new platform, a new project that has uh, just launched in the last month, um, really designed for not just handling big data, but planetary scale data. Um, I call this uh, Gigabyte a, a platform, but essentially it's a new way of publishing research uh, scaled up in a, a more efficient workflow for um, yeah planetary scale genome projects. Um, these are, are um, this is a, a, a big issue now. Um, in the last decade, from the Genome 10K project, this has really um, expanded from what was initially kind of you know a, a, a pipe dream, a wish to actual cold hard data. Um, um, more and more projects focusing on all of the different uh, corners of the tree of life um, on a phylogenomic scale, focusing on, uh, you know, geographically and also uh, taxonomically. And all of these various projects um, under the umbrella, kind of overseen by the Earth Biogenome Project, um, which is really trying to coordinate the, the millions of species um, uh, genomes that are coming hot off the sequencer. Now, this has become possible in, you know, uh, in 2020 because of a scaling up of the pipelines, because of advances in technology. Um, from um, initially from, you know, uh, the improvements in sequencing chemistry, um, sequencing throughput through automation. Um, the, then the data handling has had to expand to uh, compete with this, um, uh, you know, um, high, through, high, high performance computing, um, cloud computing, and the storage infrastructure to handle all of this has had to keep up. Um, genomics being particularly lucky with uh, having a very long history of um, data repositories handling all of the data, the INSTC consortium, um, uh, NCBI, DDBJ, uh, and the EBI. But of this whole kind of uh, pipeline, this whole kind of workflow, uh, one part has been kind of left untouched has been um, barely um, dealt with in um, in centuries because the main uh, driver, the main um, way that people get uh, credit for all of these efforts is through publication. The dissemination process is uh, still tied to the publication process, which has barely changed in 350 years. So in 2012, um, uh, we uh, stepped in to try and address this issue, uh, launching the journal GigaScience and the gig, uh, associated to GigaDB repository. And this basically um, gave, gave that credit to the release of, of data, um, making uh, publications that we called data notes, um, uh, really focusing on describing, um, describing these data sets and we had a team of curators who then would help and uh, help share this, um, working with our GigiDB uh, repository hosted at China National Gene Bank um, that can step in and kind of uh, any you know data can't fall through the gaps because we can handle anything that doesn't have a home. Um, and yeah, the, the there are two prongs to to tackle this issue. Um, cultural and technical. The cultural ones being this kind of form of credit, um, giving the data sets and citable uh, digital object identifiers um, in, our, in our repository and having on the, on the kind of technical side, lowering the barriers to do this by having a, a curation team who will basically hold the data producer's hand, organize the structure, the metadata, do peer review to kind of get that extra seal of approval. Now, it was kind of a new thing, but it still used traditional publications. The papers were static, very similar to, to normal papers, really. The GigaDB entries, we could update them and kind of do a bit more web literate, but we're still kind of stuck with papers. Um, 
But we managed to, um, in eight years, uh, use this approach for many big of these kind of planetary scale genome um, consortium projects. And in the eight years, it was our birthday in uh, July, and we kind of summarized a lot of this stuff, you know, at, um, in our first years, first eight years, we published uh, 765 papers, um, 231 of these, these specific data papers, um, spanning all over the world, thousands of authors. Um, but what we were most proud about was um, the, you know, our repository GigaDB um, liberating 46 terabytes of data, about 2000 data sets, 1200 of these genomic. And um, working yeah, hand in hand with a lot of these consortia projects over the years, our first kind of early experimentation was um, the avian phylogenomic project about 50 birds genomes we initially curated and released um uh, all of the birds via social media and, and gigadb dois built up a bit of interest and then six months later all of the publications came out including very detailed descriptions in gigascience of the comparative genomics data and the phylogenomics data um, in the same year, we published the data from the uh, RICE 3K project, 3,000 RICE genomes and 13 terabytes of data that overnight quadrupled the amount of RICE data in the public domain. Um, this incentivized the release four years before the analysis paper eventually came out. Um, we were working with the 1KP project over a decade. Um, in 2014, the first 100 genomes, uh, first 100 of these transcriptomes came out and we released a kind of marker paper on um, how to handle and use this data and the upcoming data. Eventually, a thousand uh, transcriptomes and all of the analysis then came out um, at the end of last year with two papers in uh, GigaScience describing the um, basically all of the all of the um, genomics data and another paper on the whole genome duplications. And then um, last year, we published a, a kind of pilot for the 10KP, the 10,000 plant genome project that um, focused on, um, it was about a thousand uh, raw, um, raw genomics data sets, each one with curated DOIs um, to basically aid their um, aid their usability and we felt we did quite well um, but uh, looking back you know over this first near decade there was a few lessons that we we, we kind of learned um, ultimately the technology publishing tech is terrible um, old legacy um, third-party tools have been f floating around for, for decades. The process is very slow, very expensive. The end products are very static, narrative focused, not really suitable for data sets in this way. And um, we really felt that this whole process should be updated to follow the software paradigm, i.e. code, release, fork, update, and repeat. And this kind of inspired us to look at uh, launching a second journal. But we wanted to go beyond all of the kind of, yeah, these legacy systems and pretty much start from scratch. So working with River Valley Technologies, a tech company based in the UK and India, we pretty much, yeah, rebuilt uh, every this whole process from the very beginning. Um, they've developed this amazing end-to-end, -end, um, everything in XML workflow that basically makes integration a much more simpler, a single integration point. We don't have this kind of API spaghetti in the kind of traditional publishing platforms. And there's a number of advantages of doing this. Um, as I say, it's just one platform, um, meaning that the, you know, things don't fall through the cracks in import export, um, much faster, more accurate in that respect. The one really big change is doing everything in XML cuts out 95% of the editorial production process. And that provides a really big time and cost saving. We want to make this affordable, um, not uh, thousands and thousands of dollars like the, uh, you know, the traditional uh, journals will charge for this. That, that's not scalable when you're talking about 
hundreds of thousands, millions of genomes. And um, the beauty of XML, me having everything in XML means that you can effectively push a button, instantly update, instantly spit out a um, high quality PDF version. And it means you can make changes, you can make forks with essentially no additional effort. So this is how we've basically, this has been a key selling point that we've really tried to like push this new journal. Having everything in XML also means you can change the view. You're no longer stuck with this kind of like static format. You can push a button, change the language, change the font, change it to work for you know uh, visually impaired people. Um, and yeah, we've initially focused on, on products that are forkable, um, data and software. And it also means we can um, take Building things on data and the software means we can have dynamic content. We can put widgets on top of this. And um, the other way we've tried to scale and speed things up is looking again at the actual objects, the um, way the papers are written. We want them to be short, easy to write, and um, easy to review as well. And so we've done um, a very streamlined data focused peer review system um to make that easier and for software papers we've been looking at things like um uh new ways of doing peer review for example we have collaborated with uh code check who have done portable um uh, re uh review of of code giving certificates of executability um and um We've now got our first six papers ready. Um, the first uh, genome that we have published is, is an interesting one and really shows the, the advantages of this um, because it goes back to the very beginning of the Genome 10K project. Um, Genome 10K only got off the ground when uh, BGI offered to um, fund and sequence the first 101 species. Um, once uh, that commitment had made by Huang Ming, Yang and uh, Wang Jun, um, the ball really got rolling for, for these planetary uh, genome projects. A decade on, um, we were in a great position, but it's in, it, this, it was very interesting to see not all of this data had actually come out. Um, our very first paper was actually um, one of these 101 pilot species the, that, that hadn't really been um, incentives to kind of write up yet as a, as, a, as a description for the banjo frog. And there's a big, still a big shortage of amphibian genomes. And so this is a really nice example. It shows the benefits of this. And it also shows the things you can do. We've got interactive protocols, for example. And so this is the thing that we are really um, proud of and, and excited about because these new papers that we've designed can have unlimited interactive features. Um, if you have uh, tools for visualizing the data, for example, high C maps, um, any, any- In gigabytes, we can embed video content any kind of widget like video, 3D models. Um, we have, a, we're getting a lot of imaging submissions. You can interact, play with these things, try before you buy. And if you like it, push a button, download the data and send it to a 3D printer, for example. Um, the protocols, we're really leveraging the technology protocols.io. So rather than a traditional materials and methods section, we have all of the um, stepwise protocols. You can download it onto, a, onto an app, onto a timer and just run the things. And you can fork them and change them and update your papers. Um, for software, you can do similar things as well with CodeOcean plugins. So um, the interactive features are very exciting and new. And um, as I say, the XML also allows different views. So um, you can just click, change the language. We've got Chinese versions of the website and of some of our papers. Um, you can just change the font. Here, this is a dyslexic font, for example, and you can click on, on other views. So this is the eLife lens view, if you want to see figures or at the side of the paper, for example. And this just demonstrates that you know we can go beyond static PDFs and 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 dead tree papers to really view them however you want to view them, like have it your way. 
And so um, we are at the position now where we have just announced this new journal and we would just encourage all of you to follow this software paradigm and bring your research to life. Um, this process uh, aims to be completely open, transparent and fair. Um, and so people should come to us if you want to share genomes and other data sets and, and software and pipelines and workflows. It will be as low cost as possible. If you have a consortium project, talk to us and we will try to integrate this into your workflow, having a dissemination part at the very end and get credit for the hard work that you do doing all of this stuff. So please um, contact us um, at, the, uh, at the following email address. The um, article, process, article and data processing charges are free until the 28th of February uh, next year. So lots of people to thank, um, especially you know, BGI for supporting us and River Valley Technologies for building this amazing technology. Um, please let me know if you have any questions and uh, yeah, thanks for your time.